Hi, it's Darren Hunter here, and we are with Dennis Youssef. We are Hi, from everyone. Inspire Growth Training with the PM Growth Expert Show. This is a video podcast, but also um, we have are streaming this onto the iTunes podcast and also onto Podbean as well. Just look up PM Growth Expert Show. Today we are with Rachel. Redhead all the way from New Zealand. Hi, Rachel. How are you going? Hi. <laughs> Good, thank you. Now, we have to say up front, very unusual surname, and you don't have red hair. You've got blonde hair, and of course, <laughs> that is your surname. So, welcome on board, and um, always a pleasure. But before we get into Rachel and some of the amazing results that she's been able to achieve as a BDM, we need to give a shout out for our exclusive partners. Property Safe with their cloud platform maintenance manager. Now, right back in the day when I was a property manager, I remember repairs and maintenance probably taking up to 40 to 50% of my weekly time. Now, with Maintenance Manager, have a chat to them. Go to propertysafe.com.au, ask for a demonstration, and you may be able to maybe they show you how you can save up to half of your time doing repairs and maintenance using their maintenance manager cloud platform. Anyway, back to the show. Now, Rachel, some very impressive results. Now, we've got you down here that you're with, um, we've got you with Harcourts, Cooper and Co. And you have signed up 256 new managements in the last 12 months. That's amazing, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Now, you've also told us that um, you're doing up to around about 20 deals um, or new managements a month on average. So certainly, guys, everyone knows in this pod podcast show, we only want to interview the very, very best. So you can learn from the strategies, from the points of difference that they put in place to get those results. So, of course, you do the same. You'll also get similar or same results. But Dennis, over to you. Yeah, certainly some really um, good numbers that you've done there, Rachel. I mean, we met for the first time at the Harcourts Conference, I recall, in uh, May 2018, such a long time ago now. Uh, and you, you'd you actually taken out the um, best BDM for the Harcourts in New Zealand, so well done for that as well. Yeah, yeah that, that's a fantastic achievement. It's... um. It's one of those tricky things when you've won an award, how do you then turn that into business as well? Because it's not like you can walk into a house and say, this with me, I won an award. You yeah. know, <laughs> it, doesn't quite, it, it doesn't quite work that way, but um, I'll certainly, um, you know, um, just a, a quick tip for myself when I've won some awards, I would uh, talk in the third person. So as part of my pre-listing email, I would say, you know, fantastic, uh, some happy news we're telling our clients. One of our staff members had one. What a great thing for our community. Um, so I'd talk in the third person, say, good tip for you. And if they say, you know, uh, and then I'd also say, um, look, it's not about an award being won, but it's about knowing that our company's got the right procedures in place to win. Okay. Mm, so quick, nice. quick tip there for you. So yeah, well done. It's, it's been great. Um, Obviously, um, the three of us have caught up a couple of times since we've gone into New Zealand. When we recognise and find a good BDM, Darren, we stick to them like glue, don't we? Yeah, I, I agree. And I have to say that, Dennis, um, and one thing I didn't say at the start is, you know, Rachel is from New Zealand and, and from Auckland. But, Dennis, haven't we been, been impressed on how the Kiwis do property management? I mean, they just... You know, I, I know that yep. we do, do it well, but the Kiwis, you know, from a volume point of view, um, they just seem to do it on a whole new level. So, and I think this is our very first uh, BDM interview in, uh, from New Zealand as well. So congratulations, Rachel. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think now, have we done <laughs> Watson yet? <laughs> hang on, okay. hang on, we don't Greg Watson. All right, take him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg, Greg's, like, Greg's, just like, Greg's just like the furniture. <laughs> he is. He's like female. furniture for us, but you're the first female. Well done. Yeah. So that's awesome. And um, all, all good. So, Rachel, like, why did you join real estate? You've been doing real estate for a long time. 17 years um, since I left school. So I had no plan in terms of what I wanted to do. I was, yeah, 
didn't pass school cert. I think a lot of um, successful people I hear that have just not passed school cert, but um, yeah, I didn't know where, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be, and I was just in the right place at the right time um, when I started my career. So you weren't at school thinking, I want to go into real estate. You Never. Just, didn't, oh, even, okay. didn't even, property manager didn't even cross my mind. I probably didn't even know what one was. Yeah, it, it's interesting. So did you start straight into property management? When you yep, did, straight uh, into property management at 16. Yep. 16 into property management. Wow. Yeah. That's like um, head school, down left home. Up, yeah, I, mean, I started at 17, but 16 is amazing. Well done. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea what I was thinking, but <laughs> that's cool. I mean, look at you now, 17 years. You've got um, a lot more experience in real estate than I, um, I ever have. So I'm only into my, I think it's my 11th year. I started in 2008, mid 2008. So well done. So mm. congratulations on that. So um, tell us a little bit about your area and and your office set up, etc. Like um, how you are. So you're not property management only. You've got sales. Like um, uh, you're the BDM. You don't do leasing. So how, how's your setup? So I uh, sign up all the new business throughout um, our offices. We've got um, 18 uh, Coop and Co offices throughout the North Shore and uh, West North. And I deal with all the sales agents throughout all of those offices. Uh, there's myself and I've got um, a team member, Scott um, McCoy. He is um, working as part of my team. Um, we do have another business development manager and another property manager who signs their own business as well. So I, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty much the, the first point of call um, for most um, your business into Cooper and Co. Anyway, yeah, and then you so you pass on the other business to Scott and the other BDM, then do you? Yeah, um, they I we've we've got um, a Chinese uh, property manager who signs up her own okay. business, so she yep. naturally attracts a lot of the Chinese um, clientele. And we've also got the other business development manager. He's also Chinese, so okay. And that's quite huge in Auckland, isn't it? Like that Chinese market, the Chinese are really... It is. Yeah. They're jumping yeah. in. So it's important. Even more so to... through Australia as well, Dennis. More so in the cities, you know, where the, the Chinese um, client is becoming more and more, um, you know, um, investing more and more in Australia as well. And there's certainly more of a the need for um, BDMs to, uh, you know, to be either of that culture, or even speaking Mandarin. But um, yeah, yeah, it is. And speaking of that, um, you're also learning Mandarin. Is that right? Yes, I am trying. I've, um, I've taken a, a holiday of uh, not trying, you know, not learning for the last year. But um, the year prior to that, I was, I was trying. Okay. <laughs> back onto that bandwagon of of learning the language. So, is there anything that you want to say to us? No, there isn't. <laughs> there isn't. Okay. Okay. Don't I won't put you on the spot. spot. It's all right. Darren put Greg Watson on the spot, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, but he speaks Swedish. <laughs> yeah, very well. That's no, cool. no, Mandarin is, is very difficult. But um, even using that, I've used that as a tool to try, you know, actually letting, I mean, it doesn't mean that I don't deal with Chinese owners, but I do tell them I am trying to learn the language. And, yeah. you know, and their, their eyes beam with, you know, um, delight. So it's... Uh, and, and I've had so many owners actually offer, you know, I could teach you or I could teach your daughter. My daughter also is, um, is learning Mandarin. So I think wow. it's one of the most important languages for me anyway, that I think that should be learned, especially can, in yeah. school. Can I just ask Rachel, are you um, feeling led now considering the, the cultural mix in Auckland and certainly in New Zealand, are you inclined, you, you've mentioned maybe looking at you know, learning Mandarin, but, how about Hindi or Punjabi or anything like that too? Is that something that you've considered or just at this stage Mandarin? Definitely just Mandarin. Yeah, just the, the huge amount of clientele that I'm dealing with um, are Chinese, um, especially in Auckland. And I've been turned away from business uh, from Chinese because I'm not speaking the language. Um, anyone wow. else, you know, Indian or they, they, they speak English. So I've, I've just found a lot of the Chinese are the ones that are... Um, that are purchasing property and it's the large, larger clientele that um, may not speak as good English as. Okay. So, yeah. That's interesting. So, and you, you obviously use WeChat 
to um, I use WeChat. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, that's number one um, tool to to use. I deal with a lot of owners through WeChat. Okay, which is quite interesting. I mean, I know that a few people in Australia do it, but um, New Zealand, especially in the Auckland area, I do find the BDMs and agents that I speak to, um, it's more important than Facebook Messenger. In Facebook messages, that the one of the largest um, forms of communication in the world. Mm. Yeah. But WeChat, yeah, ex yeah, excellent. So you've you've listed well over, you know, you're listing over twenty properties a month, and um, and that's quite consistently. So massive congratulations for that. That that's huge um, in being able to do that. If you were to meet yourself. The first time when you first started in real estate, you know, what advice would you give yourself? So you're walking in, you're 16 years of age, uh, you tap yourself on the shoulder, you know, what do you tell yourself? What, what's the, the best piece of advice you could give yourself? Uh, it's dealing with um, all types of uh, people. I've um, learnt over the years, it's, it took me a little while um, before becoming a business development ma manager, that the relationship and building that trust and finding something that is relatable to your client. Um, I, I've learnt a few lessons um, through that and being relatable, relatable and finding something that is um, a common thread between you and your client um, has just been number one for me. So it's um, that's won a lot of business um, for myself is is that. But being humble and being um, yeah trustworthy and and know that you are talking to someone that uh, that you know that you that they, they believe in you and and mm. vice versa. Yeah, and you're all ears as well. Yeah, I think one of the biggest problems that BDMs face is they talk too much. Um, I'm not going to say that uh, I never fell into that category. Uh, I'm sure I did. I'm sure you never um, did. Just, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I'm actually going to put my hand up and say, um, yes, I did talk too much when um, you know, you're going into that house because you're so keen to get the listing. And, you know, and I recall a couple of times, yeah, I got that one, I got that one. And then I ring them up and they tell me they listed with somebody else because the other person actually hit the concern button and I didn't. Mm. You know, so it, it is so important that we've been given two ears. Yeah. So that, that is one of the, the most profound things I've heard in regards to that. You know, I think you've just pointed out we can easily talk ourselves out of a deal by talking yeah. too much mm. and not being specific only on what the client cares about. And uh, yeah. I, I remember Andrew Reese saying it's not the listing appointment, it's the listening appointment. Because as listening. we listen, we understand yeah. the exact shape, proportion of the problem that they have and the concerns they have. And once we just examine that, we can then, you know, just address that only and then get them uh, over that end speed hump and, and to, the, to the signing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly is important. So, sorry, you go. Oh, you just don't know what their concerns are if, if you're not actually there listening to what their concerns are it's yeah you just you need to tackle that um first yeah the, the couple of other things that you said is connecting with the clients mm. so so um, being able to connect with them being able to be relationable with yep. them so um relatable and, and there's different types of personalities and yep. you know some people um for example um, you know, you can get on with the business person, but you also need to be able to get on with the bikey or the, the, the trades person or, you know, that you go into a presentation and they've got a fluorescent shirt on. You need to be able to have a decent conversation with them like you can if somebody was in a suit when you walk into the house mm -hmm. or the family person. So it's being able to relate to all of those, you know, five or six different personality traits. I mean, um, if you can master that, then it doesn't matter what stat or how good you are. If you can't connect and relate to the people, mm. then you're not going to get the business. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, right. what's, a, what's an example of when you're in a property, how you, you can try and gain trust with a client? Have you got any examples of um, stuff that you've said? I mean, I used to, you know, walking up to a property, I'm always glancing around to see if there's a boat or if there's a sign there in defence. You walk into a house, I'm looking at pictures, yeah. you know, yeah. wedding, wedding photos, or if I can see a jet 
meaning they might be in the, the, the Royal Australian Navy or they're, they're an Air Force person or whatever. I'm always looking for those things. Mm. Um, what, what's an example that you might try and do? Well, kids is an easy thing, um, but prior to having um, kids, I would, yeah, I, I mean, that was hard because not having kids, you know, and if, oh, I mean, I had a rent, rental properties then as well, but not, um, you know, like if, if I couldn't find anything that I couldn't relate to them, it would be, I'd be talking about my own experiences or my own investment properties as well. If I can, you know, that story or that concern that they have, I'll try and tie that in with something that they might be concerned about. Um, but I'd always be looking around, you know, uh, it, it was um, last week I took a photo of their fridge because I absolutely loved it. It was the same fridge that I had, but I was jealous of theirs because they got the new upgraded one that's black rather than my chrome looking one, you know. So it was, um, I, I've got a lot of experience in the um, in building and actually being very hands on with um, building our home when we um, did that in 2008 and I've um, renovated a lot of properties and sold a lot of properties so um, that experience and that side of things so if they're currently renovating at the moment or they're changing things I can very confidently give them the right advice in terms of what they need to do or you know an approximate on how much something would cost so there's quite a lot of areas that I can yeah. pull that in yeah yeah, well done. That's really good that you can, um, they can then feel relatable to you because of your experience. So that's, that's quite handy. So uh, if you were to start a rent roll from scratch, zero, no properties, go out on your own, what, what would you, what would be your three key areas of rent roll growth strategies that you'd put in place? Um, well, I have, I've started a portfolio from scratch before. So um, for an example, when I came into that office, there was another property manager, there still is um, a property manager in that office, very big personality, and uh, she had um, a massive uh, um, you know, name out there for her area. So what I did is um, I built that relationship and the office that I was in was um, obviously with sales agents. I built that relationship with those sales agents and, uh, and gave them what they wanted. I know that sounds a bit, you know, kind of a bit funny, but it's not, not in terms of the appraisals and what price they wanted, but I wanted to get things to them like quicker than I anticipated you know like if I said look I'll get an appraisal to you by the end of today I got it to them within that half hour um, and that's how I ended up winning that business is um, is being that first person as point of contact mm -hmm. but if I started uh, my own business I'd be contacting all of my key um, contacts in the area um, and I know this is always talked about but you know accountants um, building companies you know we've got um, some new home companies that I'm dealing with and doing appraisals for them, you know, open homes. If there was sales agents, um, offices that don't have property management, there's, there's so many avenues that I'd be, you know, working on if, um, if I started from scratch. Does that yeah, answer? cool. That's really good. Yeah. No, no, it, it does. It, it is good. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about setting up um, strategic alliances with people, you know, mm -hmm. um, before they purchase, whether it's a um, sales agents or um, mortgage brokers or you know those contacts that you might have, you know people before they um, even speak to a, a sales agent, which is you know a lot of people tend to forget they're waiting for the phone call to ring. Yeah. Um, but it's about getting out there and prospecting and doing it. So that's really good. So right now it's Monday morning. Well, it is for us in Australia. I know it's midday for you in New Zealand at the moment. But, um, you know, let's go back a couple of hours, being a Monday morning as it is today, and your boss walks in or the bank manager rings you up and they tell you, you know, you've got one week to list 10 properties. What do you do? Or you're going to lose your job because we have to shut the business down or whatever the case. You mm. know, what do you do? You need to get 10 properties listed this week. First, I'll be calling everyone that's on my database. So all my current landlords, I'd be asking for business if they have current properties themselves or if they know of a family or friend that has a property that they're looking at having property managed or have need, needing property management services. 
um, calling all the private listed um, listings as well. As you know, we've got a huge amount of them in New Zealand um, compared to Australia. So I'll be contacting all of those private listings. Um, if I need to get something done now, it'd be, yeah, it would be that. And asking and giving them the advice, it doesn't mean that you'd be listing their property straight away, but um, being there to actually be the first point of contact if they have got any issues. Um, and yeah, as I said, just the key businesses in the area as well. So basically, you're getting on the phone, right? I'm getting on the phone. Yeah, I'll be on the phone like, you know, 24 7. I'll getting be on just the phone. Yeah, it'll be glued to my ear. Yeah. Yeah. Even friends. Like, I, I mean, I think a lot of business development managers don't actually ask for business from um, their own personal contacts. Um, they, they may get it just coincidentally, but they need to. Um, they need to be asking for it and, and keep your ears peeled. You know, you're always in the supermarket or at the bank or, um, you know, always at the restaurant and you, you can hear things going on. You know, you can hear conversations um, and, and people talking about property all the time. It's, you know, it's a, it's a um, very common subject for people to be talking about the buying or selling or renting. Yeah, it is. And um, if I can talk about, um, my last trip to New Zealand, we, um, there was three occasions we went out, Darren. We were having lunch in a cafe next to an office and there was people sitting next to us, a couple of tables over. They were talking about selling their home without using an agent. Mm -hmm. um, then we went to another place and we were waiting for the auction. So we went to... Um, uh, a bar, should we say, <laughs> while we're waiting. And there was a lady, she, I was wearing the shirt that you've got on, Darren, and she said, what's Inspired Growth Training? And I, and I asked her if she's got a management. I think she said she had like 13 or 30 properties. Something something along those lines, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And once she'd worked out like um, that I was, a, I'd explained that I was a trainer and I had Rachel, she was all backing off. Oh, no, we <laughs> do it ourselves. <laughs> 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 I was going for the kill for Rachel, you know, and she was like, cut, 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 you know, and, she <laughs> and, um, and, and then at the same place, the people sitting next to us were talking about buying an investment property. That was like three in, in like within a few hours. Of each yeah. other. That, and it's so true. You've got to listen out wherever you are. Whatever. Have your radar on. Have your radar on radar. all the opportunities that are, that are always around you. Mm. Yeah, I used to always do, um, now we do online Woolies and Coles shopping, but um, when I was living in Nara um, and I was working in real estate, I always did my coal shopping. Grab the trolley, it used to take me an hour and a half to two hours to walk through the aisles. Um, and I'd always do it after hours because that's when a lot of business owners are doing their shopping as well. There was no mm -hmm. online shopping like there is today. So I I'd be networking with business owners in the supermarket and cutting deals. <laughs> I can just imagine that's it. That's just how it is. <laughs> that's just <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so um, I, I, what, what would be your, the biggest rent roll growth strategy for you? What brings in about 80% of your business, would you say? You know, I know you've got um, a, a large sales team, but, um, uh, you know, uh, is that where most of your business comes in? Where's, where's most of your business coming in at the moment? Uh, definitely sales agents. Um, well, I mean, they, they've, they give us about 70, 75% of our referral business. Yep. So um, it's, it's definitely something I'm always working on with the sales agents. Um, we've got new sales agents that come and go all the time, obviously, and um, building that relationship. Um, there's even sales agents with, that are outside of Harcourts that um, refer business to us. Um, but keeping that relationship with them, as I said, you know, just giving them what they need and doing it fast, especially those rental appraisals. If they need something, I just get onto it straight away. And I guess lucky for the business development managers, they have the time to be able to, to do that. Property managers, mm. I've found, you know, have a lot of other things that they're trying to do at the same time. So, um, getting those appraisals out to them ASAP, you know, giving them the information that they need and provide it to them and just being there to, to help them through any process. If they've got an investor that's looking at purchasing, um, yeah, just, yeah, just 
just just just help them out as much as I can. And I'm I'm, I'm just doing that on a daily basis. And with those sales agents, we do um, because of the large uh, offices or the amount of offices we have, we've got inductions every month as well. So. Um, once a month, I am there at the induction and doing you know, a 10 minute intro on property management um, to the, the newbies that come into the biz, into Coop and Go. Okay, so you, you caught my attention here on a couple of things. Firstly, Darren, we've done an interview on, um, you interviewed myself about why a BDM might not be listing 30, 40 properties a month. And, and one of the things that we said is they, they can get caught into property management. The BDM gets caught into doing other tasks. Doing anything um, other than BDM, nuts and bolts, filling in. Whatever the, the case. Boat, having to manage yeah, properties but, and get on the tools. Yeah, but what Rachel's actually said there, she's highlighted that a BDM's got time to jump and act quickly for a salesperson because yeah. You know, society these days, and I've got a couple of sessions on this, that, that, you know, people want things now. And salespeople, they want the answer now because they're trying to sell a house and a BDM can drop everything and uh, obviously get those appraisals um, done as quickly as they can. And that's then gaining trust between the sales and the property management department because, you know, that, that's good synergy to have. So that's, that's really good. You also caught my attention that you mentioned that you've got other sales agents um, that are referring business to you. Mm. Have they got property management departments? They do. And they're referring business to you? Yeah. They do. So tell, yeah. us, yes, they tell do. us about that. Is that they just don't trust? They're, generally, when I hear that sort of stuff, where a salesperson is that has, they can... Yes, you're still... Business connecting with them they, they, they refer they can refer business to their own rental department but still choose to refer it elsewhere on the surface showing possibly a display of disloyalty but is it because they don't trust their property managers or is it they're not getting remunerated properly what, what what's the main reasons you're seeing why you're capturing their business where they could be referring it to their own company um I don't know what they get referral wise within their own office. So it could be that we do refer, um, you know, we do pay a referral to our sales agents, but if it's a sales agent outside of Parkourts, we, we still pay them a referral. Um, second has been a definitely a relationship, definitely a relationship. And again, you know, getting, getting them what they need when they need it, but we don't, we don't really appraise properties that are outside of Harcourts. They don't generally come to us for an appraisal. So I can't really say that that's um, something that we give to get business back. But, um, but definitely that relationship, who knows if it's the referral or not. Um, you know, a lot of sales agents like getting paid a referral, but um, yeah, I can't really say if that's actually their number one reason why they do it and what they, they should be getting paid from their current property manager but they've all got property management um, offices within there and I don't go out and pursue and um, get try and get business from other sales agents outside of Harcourts I don't personally think it's ethical um, to do that so they have come to us and they've obviously seen that we are um, get you know we are doing the business the um, the quickest the fastest the easiest for them and they trust us, you know, they know that if they're going to refer someone to us, they know that the client is going to be looked after. Can't argue with that. Mm. So, Rachel, I ask you, um, let's, let's just ask you a question now. Let's just say you're in a listing appointment, you're in front of a client. Now, this is not a client, for example, that has come from sales referred to you, which is likely a very warm lead. This is perhaps a colder lead where they're talking to you and two other agencies. Um, and comparing you against the others. Now, um, the owner says, well, you know, why are you different? Um, what, what sort of points of difference do you use to uh, influence and impress the prospective client to choose you as opposed to your competitors? Um, look, I don't, I don't do no hard pictures to, um, to our clients. I, I really just sit down and actually go through them with them. So, um, the reason why they should come to us is because we've got someone dedicated in each role that's going to look after their property um, needs. Um, we've got, you know, a tenancy manager, um, 
a leasing consultant, we've got our property managers, we've got you know, our dedicated accounting staff, um, team leader, we've got yeah, everyone in their own field. So that one property manager that I dedicate them to doesn't, isn't overloaded and is trying to do um, the inspections and the viewings and, you know, and um, going to court all at the same time. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's, I, I believe we're the only, or one of the only agencies on the North Shore that are doing that. Every other agency tends to have a property manager that's looking after um, majority of their uh, staff. And if, if they've got a property manager that's, that's away, then they're going to have to relieve for that other property manager when we don't have that. Okay. So, all right, next question. Let's talk about fees and, and you know, getting the best fees that we can. And you've told me that you're dealing with people um, from uh, you know, certainly a variety of cultural backgrounds. Um, and some of these cultural mm -hmm. backgrounds do um, like to, you know, perhaps ask for a discount um, or, you know, want to bargain or something like that. So when you're confronted with, um, you know, if you can do your management fee cheaper or if you can match your management fee with the other agent down the road, how do you overcome, you know, in general, uh, fee objections like that? What do you do? What, what do you say? What script do you use to, you know, make sure that you're getting the fees that you've, uh, you're, you're set out to get? Um, I, I show them the statistics that we have. Um, I've worked out what our vacancy rate is and our um, arrears is um, for the northern region and compared to other offices. And I give them those statistics. So I tell them what, what they could um, possibly be losing or in, in, and I give them a price comparison in, in terms of what they could be losing per week. Um, per year nice. so yeah it's, it's it's being able to know your figures and and do a, a price comparison and I do that with the fees as well I I don't think there's any other agency that charges I, I think that we are the lot you know the we charge the most on the North Shore definitely um, there might be one other agency that is just a little bit comparable but the rest of them are all charging fees less than us so um, depends on what they offer and what we offer, and I, I do a bit of a analysis with them. And okay, and that's brilliant. So you're you're charging more in fees, and you're listing a high number of properties per month. That's just um, you're going to prove. It just proves again that people, at the end of the day, when they sign that agreement, they are actually not after cheap fees. They're actually after something a lot more, which is trust and relationship. Yeah connection and confidence. So uh, Rachel, let's just go a, a step deeper with the, the uh, getting better fees and getting our fees over the line. So I'm a client. Yeah. You're signing me up. I say to you, Rachel, if you can match your management fee with the other cheaper agents down the road, we'll sign up with you. What, what's perhaps a script or what, what's your response to that? How would you, what, what would you usually say? Uh, Look, we, we offer more than what the other agency down the road um, is charging. And I give your reasons why we do charge more than the other agency. Um, and look, knowing who your market is and who the other agencies around, obviously I'm not going to tell you the client this, but knowing actually what you're competing against is important. I'm quite competitive and I've got uh, a copy of the management authorities throughout pretty much every agency I can find. Um, so I know what everyone charges and I know what, you know, if they do fix um, contracts and how to get out of those contracts and um, refixing contracts and what, you know, they're charging for break fees, for selling their property, for fixing tenancies and I know you, you like charging all the fees but it's just knowing what everyone else is charging and knowing who I'm up against so if you ask me that question and I'll find out from you exactly who those other two companies are then I'll be able to actually do the analysis and tell you why we should be coming you know to Harcourts yeah so you know like any uh, experienced battle general you've got to know your enemy really clearly you've got to know your your enemy back to front, you've got to know their weaknesses, you've got to know everything. So you've obviously gone out to make sure that you know all your competitors that you could be up against, done your homework, know their weaknesses, know their fees. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well done. So that's a, that's a real key 
uh, point for everyone listening in, you've got to know your competitors back to front and sideways and get as much research done on them as you can so you can go in there and knowledgeable. Well done. Yeah, it's a little bit stalkish, but I know where they all go. <laughs> so. it, it, it's not stalkish. It's, um, I mean, it's how does smart, a know what your business sense. You've got to know your competitors. Know what are. I used to say that all the time when I first started. Yeah. Yeah. You do. I think that's the uh, competitive uh, side to me. It's, you know, it, it, yeah. If I know that the sales agent has left, you know, I, I know where their downfall is and who's looking after that portfolio during that time and where that property manager's gone. And it's just good to know it's, it's, it's not just the area knowledge, but it's the, you know, it's the business side knowledge. And it's, I, I just like to know people's weaknesses and strengths. It's, <laughs> it's me. Dennis, over to you, mate. Yeah, it, it's certainly important to know. Yeah, so w what are some of your KPIs that you do, key performance indicators? What are some of the things that, um, you know, you do per week, per month that, that, that you've got in place um, to win business? So um, as an example, I know that you're getting into video now. So is video one of the, is that something that you aim to, to get done per week? Is that a an example of the KPI or what are your tasks that you've got to be proactive to win business? Um, look, I've written some new ones this year. So um, I want to be doing every day 10 calls before 10. So mm -hmm. that, that may be that I'm calling current clients or um, following up with prospective clients. So 10 calls before 10, five days a week. Um, 20 flyers I want to send out um, per property, four properties per week. Um, to just listed uh, properties and also just leased. Um, yep. I had done that a few years ago, but I'm, I'm going to get back into that. Um, I would like to do one social media video per week, as you, um, as you mentioned. So I want to post that onto my Facebook page. I don't know if that's probably under or over, but it's, uh, it's a bit of a start with the social media side of things. Um, one oh, I think one a, one a week is your minimum. I, I, I like yeah. that. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Um, one blog per week, uh, per month, sorry, as well. So I just want to do a, a new blog per month. Uh, 30 appraisals per month, which is probably what I'm doing anyway. Um, one sign, um, sign up per working day. I've always worked that. Um, my goal is to, to do one sign up per day. It's just easier to work that out over the month. So, you know, if it's the second of the month, I should have had two signed up in that month and that's my goal is to have the 30 um, and a clear 30 each month uh, 25 sign ups per month is um, is probably what I would prefer to get um, obviously aiming for 30 is is definitely my um, my bigger goal um, and one network Working meeting um, per week as well, which I have been doing, but just consistently doing that. And if I don't make that networking meeting, making sure that I, I have some sort of networking meeting during that week. And um, five, five sales agents coffees per week as well. Nice. Yeah. I look, that's, um, that's quite a detailed list that you've given us there. I think that's, um, that's really good. Yeah, well done. Um, that's uh, um, every KPI that you've got in place there is certainly um, what we've got in our list of KPIs. So I think that's um, it's good that you've got that there. And I love the just list of just lease. So many people that don't do that. Um, mm. and, you know, when they see a for lease sign out the front, they get a just lease flyer, uh, a branded vehicle in the street for that week or two weeks. That That's a concentrated level of branding of, of um, you know, Harcourt in in the street for a couple of weeks. I'm all over that stuff. Um, and door knocking as well is what I... Um, I used to help yeah. people take that they're shopping in the house if I saw them, you know, out the front, I'd help them. So, you know, that's really good. I think it's important to, um, to get that. So you've also um, answered my next question about your goals for next... for this year, should we say. So we're at the beginning of the year now. So your yeah. aim is to, is to go from 21 to 25 per month as a minimum. That's what you want to do. So I think 25 that's, minimum. I, yeah. I'm not gonna, I was about to say 30 max, but no, I, I'd ultimately want to get 30, but um, 25 is my minimum. 
Yeah, that's good. That's um, that's some big numbers there. And um, I certainly believe after being into your office and um, meeting you um, and seeing the capabilities uh, of what you can do. And if I could just add to your KPI, you also attend auctions. Yes. Um, yes. So, uh, you know, that's... Um, so you're meeting the investor prior to they've even purchased a property and um, then seeing they're getting some rapport with them as well, which I think is great. An ingenious idea, I say, Darren, which goes to auctions. Mm. Um, I think it's um, it's great. And the, the auctions, I've got to say, that one that I went to, was it 16 properties? I think there was for sale. Yeah, I think it was 16 or 18, yeah. And the room was full of bias. I was licking my lips as a BDM. <laughs> I'm yeah, it's like, good when they put all the auctions into one room, you know, instead yeah. of individually at the property, and things can be quite electric for sure. So, yeah. You know, that's... And there was even an auctioneer from Adelaide, Darren. Oh, really? Yeah, he was born in Adelaide, but he lived in Perth. So, um, yeah, he was um, a pretty cool guy. But um, and, and the auctioneers were introducing um, Rachel, which I thought was really good as well. So yeah, several uh, times. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's really good because it gives the, the credibility to um, the BDM. The people in the room are all looking at who the auctioneer is talking about. So um, and you are walking the room, which I think is um, important as well. So I'll add that to your KPI. So your goals, you've obviously got set are quite good and um, well done for that. So um, I think it's important to um, have it up. And you've got a lot of, um, I can see all your awards in the background there as well. And um, uh, whiteboards for goals. The what, sorry? <laughs> Whiteboards, have you got a whiteboard where you've got your numbers down that you want to get? No, I still need to work on that whiteboard. My ceilings are on the angle. <laughs> I don't have very many flat walls. I can see, I can see. Darren, I keep telling you she needs to get a whiteboard and she needs to have her last year's numbers on it so they're in your face to be. Yeah, yeah, you no, know? that's good. All right, yeah. well, uh, last, last question, Rachel. Um, Let's say you're on stage speaking at the Inspired Growth Conference. You've got business owners, you've got BDMs in the room in front of you, and you've got one minute on stage. What's the most important thing that you'd like to say to them? Gee, um, they, um, no hard sales pitch. I, I find that when you're doing that hard sales pitch and it and it bleeds from your pores, they know about it. So. Um, I, I think just being genuine and again, you know, going back to being relatable and and um, honest and trustworthy is um, is going to win you more business than you know having a hard sales pitch um, to try and win that business over. They know when you're desperate, and uh, it's it's obvious. So um, try and tone that down. You know, when Dennis, you're talking about talking a lot, I sometimes pull myself up going, man, you're talking way too much. Just shut up, you know? Um, so just listening and responding, um, when it's needed, don't, don't, you know, talk over the, the client, just listen to what their needs are. Mm. Um, but yeah, believe in your worth as well. Um, I know it was mentioned in um, a previous podcast, but it was, um, something that really resonated with me is is knowing um, what you're worth, what your property managers are worth. Um, they don't deserve to be um, getting business that is um, being discounted. And I find a lot of sale, or, sorry, a lot of owners who are asking for a discount or end up getting a discount in some way end up being one of the worst clients. So um, if they are willing to um, you know, pay for your services. They are they they generally are you know much better clients overall, and you get a much you know happier property manager. That's well, some great great words of wisdom there, Rachel. Well done, and Dennis. I think that's been a great interview and some really good points there. Yeah, I I I really like that. Um, you obviously know the worth of the property managers in your office and you're standing up for them. The BDM is out there fighting for them because you understand how much they work and um, and they don't doubt would see that value and feel appreciated at back that you're mm. getting those full fees, you know, back from them. One thing that I used to do, Darren, is um, if I won the listing, let's say Rachel was the property manager and, um, in, in my office and, and I knew she was good at, you know, her... Um, 
careers, let's say, I would go up to her and say, hey, Rach, I won this listing because I told these clients how good you are at chasing the rent whenever someone mm. falls behind. So, so it's, it's, it's actually encouraging her for her great work, mm. you know. So, yeah. uh, and it, it, again, it's, you know, there's always that struggle of that handover from the BDM to the property manager. So it's important to keep that rapport between a BDM and a property manager up there. Uh, they work mm. their behinds off. I, I didn't win the listings I won. Um, I, I won the listings I won because I knew I had the right team behind me. And you've really touched on that. So I think that's really important. Great interview. Um, you certainly know your worth um, mm. and the value in it. I love the competitive spirit. Um, just like those damn Kiwis who beaten the Aussies in the rugby. But anyway. Um, All right. That, let's, let's wrap this interview up. Um, Rachel, <laughs> if people will have any questions and want to get hold of you, what's the best way? Oh, they could, they could either email me um, at rachel.retied at harcourts.co.nz or um, New Zealand 027 333 4484. Okay. And um, at the uh, Cooper & Co. Uh, website, where, where will they find you there? Uh, just uh, couponco.co.nz. Um, we we are the on the um, staff. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll find me on there. All righty. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Dennis. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.